that's all sounds like vigilante justice to me. If the person is violent, the answer is not to destroy their property. The, the answer to violence is to call the police and have them evicted. Taking all that into your own hands because you believe you have authority over your adult child is not actually correct. So this is a Western District of Michigan federal court lawsuit, and it's a federal court lawsuit uh, uh, claiming diversity jurisdiction. This is important because this is how we get the amount of damages in question exceeds $75,000. That's not saying that the amount of damages is $75,000. It's saying that it exceeds it, and that needs to be alleged in any diversity of jurisdiction lawsuit. So we're claiming that the items at issue here were worth at least $75,000 and one penny. Defendants invited plaintiff to move into their house. Plaintiff moved into defendant's house. October 5th, 2016, plaintiff brought with him personal property. The property was uh, pornographic in nature. None of the property was illegal in nature. While living with defendants, plaintiff exchanged household chores in lieu of rent. Plaintiff, at the request of local law enforcement, left defendant's house August 23rd, 2017. A little less than a year later, I guess. Yes, about 10 months later. After plaintiff left their house, defendants planned to return the property to plaintiff. Plaintiff requested his property on November 22nd. On or about December 16th, defendants delivered some of plaintiff's property. Plaintiffs noticed that some of his property was missing. Plaintiff asked defendants, and the defendant stated the items were destroyed. Defendant sent plaintiff an email stating, I don't think you have been listening to me, so let me make this very clear. I do not possess your pornography. It is gone. It has either been destroyed or disposed of. I may well have missed a few items that are now in your possession, but at this point, if you don't get it, it is gone. Ditto for your sex toys and smutty magazines. The email continued, we counted 12 moving boxes full of pornography plus two boxes of sex toys, as you call them. We began that day the process of destroying them, and it took quite a while to do so. Frankly, plaintiff, I did you a big favor by getting rid of all this stuff for you. February 23rd, 2018, plaintiff contacted the sheriff's department and spoke to a deputy. The defendant admitted that the property was destroyed. They further admitted that defendants possessed some property of plaintiffs, but that they were in no hurry to return the property due to plaintiff being upset with them about the destruction of his previous property. (laughs) Of, because, because of course you're not allowed to be upset about somebody destroying your property. 12 moving boxes of porn. Eh, I can store more on a hard drive. March 17th, 2018, defendant sent plaintiff an email stating, Believe it or not, one reason for why I destroyed your porn was for your own mental and emotional health. Plaintiff maintained prices of most or all the property in question. Plaintiff maintained records of most or all the property in question. Plaintiff estimates the value of the property in question to be $28,940.72. Plaintiff asks for a repayment of the destroyed property. The plaintiff alleges statutory conversion, which is which is basically when you have someone's property and then you keep it. It's a form of theft. And that's that's it. Uh, okay. So then award treble damages under Michigan statutory conversion statute, which would make the amount $86,822.16, award costs and attorney's fees, and all other relief this court deems warranted. So yeah, that's interesting. I like the way this document is written. It gets really straight to the point. There is no beating around the bush. Ah! <laughs> And he is represented by a lawyer like this isn't pro se, so that's why it looks very nice and professional. Yeah, some lawyers will flourish, some lawyers will, you know what I mean? But like this is, there is no flourishing, it's this is what happened, this is what we need, end of story. So this is a letter, it seems, from, I'm guessing from the parent to the child, the adult child. Yes. Uh, We're not going to read this, but uh, it's it's not very um, nice. Yeah, so this is the the father. So there there's a whole email chain back and forth and I'll just go over the the broad strokes of oh god, I <laughs> um, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just summarize. Go for it. 
what's happened. So they have had an estranged relationship for about seven years where the parents were not speaking to the son. The son was married and denied them access to grandkid, all of that stuff. Uh, son gets divorced, uh, reaches out for help. Parents say, okay, yeah, we'll provide you with some money to get you a good divorce settlement. And he's homeless. And so they say, you know, despite our rocky relationship, you can come live with us. Father is very, um, father is very anti-porn. And part of this stems from um, the, the plaintiff's childhood, because when he was in high school, he, according to the father, formed a gang which funded itself by distributing pornography to other high school students. So what this sounds to me, though, is that like they, they found a source and they were like selling dirty mags to their peers, which is not quite like a gang of illegal activity that I yeah. usually think of. But, you know, if I was, so a, they, I'm, I'm sorry, um, but if I was a kid them. and I could sell, I, I would probably have done something similar. I didn't, but I would probably have done something similar and called it like, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. I would not have thought, so, you know, I'm doing something wrong or illegal. When the son moves into the parents' place, the father says, do you have any porn? And son says, no. And as we know, he had about 12 moving boxes full of porn. So that was kind of a lie. Uh, there is a domestic disturbance. A couple weeks later, the police are called. The police say the son has to leave for at least three days. So there's a, a violent situation going on. Um, Maybe there was a reason why these guys didn't talk for seven years. And and the son moves away and he um, asks for his stuff to be. And the parents go through his stuff and then discover so much porn. And the father is concerned. He alleges that there's like child pornography and very violent and illegal pornography and... Um, he alleges some very specific things, which I was like, ooh, let's not read that on stream. Uh, so the father is very unhappy. The son says, nope, everything was perfectly legal. Uh, parents destroy it. And son goes, hey, wait a second. Like some of those were like my 1980s VHS. Like they don't make that anymore. I can't yeah. find that anywhere. This was like a one of a kind thing. So the, the parents uh, basically are saying, Go ahead and sue us. We told you not to bring this into our house. You were violent when you were around here. And uh, yeah, we destroyed your stuff. So I'm... And the, and the father sort of said, well, one of the reasons why we destroyed it was because there was illegal pornography like mixed in with this. And so we were trying to spare you from jail time. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, according to the parents, of course, the son is very firm that everything was perfectly legal. So yeah. the parents are alleging he has mental health issues and need needs therapy for sex addiction, not more porn. Yeah, that's that's all sounds like vigilante justice to me. Like if there was trial pornography, the answer is not destroy it against the will of the person claiming that it's not child pornography. Uh, if the person is violent, the answer is not to destroy their property. The, the answer to violence is to call the police and have them evicted and or arrested if the violence is, you know, warrants it. So taking all that into your own hands because you have the authority, you believe you have authority over your adult child is not actually correct. So I hope that the police took him seriously, and I hope that the courts take it seriously, because just because a person is a is an adult child does not make it okay for the parents to break the law. Twelve moving boxes. It was a collection. There's, if you were so inclined, you could go into the exhibit and it lists all of the titles. So the son originally tried to have um, a criminal complaint against the parents for uh, destroying all of this. Yeah. And uh, but there was an issue with the prosecutor's office not receiving um, the proper type of evidence in a timely way. And so the prosecutor declined to prosecute, which is why this is going civil. 
All right, and that's our show, everybody. Thank you very much to all of our supporters. This is a community-supported channel here, Lawful Masses, your legal education channel of choice. Thank you to our April 2019 supporters, which now include Sponsus.org supporters, Twitch subscribers, uh, Patreon patrons, and very shortly we'll include YouTube uh, join button subscribers. I don't know how you word that. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mintain, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Snorri Wazatsky, Sean McNamara, Atarik, and thank you very much to the $5 plus supporters who have been scrolling on the not flickering LED panel behind me. I think I fixed it this morning and will be scrolling on the crawl at the end of the thing here over my face. So we'll bring you some dog video here for the last minute and a half of this song. Love you very much. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Have a good week, my lawful masses. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Bye.